Hi everyone. Today we're going to carry on reading from my winter story, Star, which is all about a tiger. Now, coincidentally, I've got a visitor for this video as well, and her name is Star as well. That's one of the reasons that I called the tiger in my book, Star. This is my cat, Star. Officially, her name is actually Starshine. She was named by my son when he was seven, but we don't usually call her Starshine. We just call her Star or Starzy. So, Star and I are going to read chapter four of Star. The beautiful cover of this book is by Britta Teckendrup, and the inside illustrations are by Joanne Davies. Now, I've got a strong feeling that halfway through this chapter, Star's going to decide she's giving up on the idea and she's going to make a disappearance, but we'll see how it goes. The little room grew colder and colder as the night wore on. Anushka huddled under her bedclothes, trying to find the courage to move. She'd been curled up in her bed for what felt like hours now, worrying and planning and trying to think if this was a stupid idea. Actually, she knew it was a stupid idea, but she wanted to do it anyway. Even though her sensible side said that she should listen to her parents, her friends and everyone else in the village, that she shouldn't be going anywhere near a tiger. But there had been something so lost in the cub's golden eyes, Anushka was determined to find her. Moving as quietly as she could, Anushka crept out of bed began to dress, with one eye cautiously on her sleeping sister. She needed as many layers as she could possibly put on. Vests, long-sleeved shirts, a jumper, three pairs of warm socks. Her boots were good waterproof ones, and she'd take two pairs of thick gloves and her fluffy furry hat. It didn't matter if she looked like a snowman, as long as she kept warm. She could get frostbite if she was out there in the cold for too long. There she goes, I told you. Her grandfather had lost two toes to frostbite a few years before. He said he hadn't even realised it was happening. He had shown her the stumps, and Anushka shuddered, remembering. Then she padded downstairs to the kitchen and started to fill her pockets with supplies, squinting at her list in the torchlight. She picked up her coat as she slipped out through the door and onto the porch and wrapped a huge scarf around her face as one last layer. Then she gripped her torch tightly, her fingers swollen by the double layer of gloves. The beam of light shone out onto the packed snow. At least it was a clear night with no more snow falling, but the light seemed so thin and faint. It hardly cut through the darkness at all. She was only about a hundred metres from the trees, and there the darkness seemed even thicker, a heavy mass of black on black. Anushka stood hesitating on the porch, listening to the sounds of the sleeping village, the creak of wooden houses shifting in the wind, a faint sigh from someone's stove keeping the house warm through the night, a dog turning over in its sleep with the breath of a growl. That was all. She was the only one awake. As she reached behind her for the handle of the door, Anushka wasn't sure if she was pulling it shut behind her or opening it again, so she could slip back inside to bed. But then an owl shrieked somewhere close by, making her jump, and the door clicked shut. So she had to go. I was leaving anyway, Anushka whispered to herself as she stepped out into the snow. I was. She marched through the snow, her torch held tightly in her hand, making for the dark band of trees. She passed Eva's house and imagined her friend fast asleep dreaming about tigers. If only she was like Eva, Anushka thought. Eva wasn't scared of anything. She was always so brave. She didn't care if people teased her or if she got told off for being too noisy at school. Eva had wanted to go and look for the tiger. Anushka paused for a minute wondering if she could throw snowballs at her friend's window and get her to come too. But it would be too hard to wake Eva and explain without waking her whole family. Anushka trudged on. The cub's probably still close by, she murmured, as the trees loomed up over her. She could be just over there, waiting for the village to be quiet. 
She's probably hoping to come and find some food. I bet she can smell everyone's dinners. I'll find her and give her some food so she follows me home. And then I can wake up Papa and he'll tell Dimitri. Then the people from the nature reserve will come and rescue her. Easy. Anushka swallowed hard. It was all very well to say it, but she still had to walk between those dark trees in the middle of the night. Like all the children in the village, Anushka knew how dangerous the forest was. It wasn't just the bears and lynx and wild boar that lived there. The place was vast. There were paths here and there and hunters' huts. There were roads that cut through, as well as the railway line that ran not too far from the village. But most of the forest was wild and empty. It was almost impossible to remember one's way. However hard Anushka tried, she was likely to get lost. She fumbled in her coat pocket for her secret weapon, a ball of string. She wasn't sure how long it was, but it would give her a chance at least. Once she could no longer see the lights of the village, she would tie one end of the string to a tree. Then she'd be able to follow it back. It should help her see if she was walking in circles too. String. Anushka muttered to herself as she stepped between the first of the trees, her torch beam flashing on the dark needle branches. I'm hunting a tiger with a torch and a ball of string. Oh, and the piroshki from Papa's lunch. The darkness seemed to close around her as she walked further among the trees, but it felt a little warmer now she was out of the wind. Anushka looked back. She could still see a few faint lights it wasn't time to start unrolling the string yet. Those golden gleams among the trees were her last link to home and she dreaded seeing them fade out. She had to keep picturing the tiger cub's golden eyes instead. Anushka peered behind her and felt her heart thump. There were no more lights. She retraced her steps until she could see the village again and pulled the string out of her pocket. She could feel the little wooden tiger there too her fingers brushed it as she fumbled for the string. She smiled. It was her good luck charm. She unwound a length of string and looped it onto a low branch. She had to take her gloves off to get the knot to stay properly tied and the cold bit at her fingers. Then she set off again, slowly unrolling the string behind her. Now it felt as though the journey had truly begun, that she was an adventurer. Anushka shuddered. You're such a coward, she told herself crossly. Think how scared the tiger cub must be without her mother. The string seemed to unravel horribly quickly. The ball was already a lot smaller and she hadn't come far at all. What was she going to do when the string ran out? It had seemed like such a good idea when she saw it on the shelf in the kitchen. But would she really just turn back when the string was gone? Anushka was so busy worrying about the string and keeping her step on the rough snowy ground that it took a few seconds for her to notice the rustling behind her. She froze, hoping, hoping that it was the tiger cub and that the strange connection she'd felt between them wasn't something she had just imagined. Slowly, she turned, lifting the torch to point in the direction of the rustling among the trees. All she could see between the pine branches was a lump of darkness, not the stripes of a tiger. Anushka lifted the torch a little higher and the light flickered and settled on the face of a startled bear, its black fur gleaming in the torchlight. There was a clear ring of white around its throat like a necklace. It was beautiful. But staring at her from between the bare branches of a silver birch tree, only a few metres away, it was terrifying too. Anushka stumbled backwards, nearly dropping the torch, and then she tripped, yelping out loud as she landed on her back in the snow. She was struggling to get up, hoping that the bear was as shocked as she was and she'd be able to dash away when she heard more sounds, from behind her this time. There must be two of them. How is she going to get away now? Anushka scrambled up to her knees, desperately searching for the torch. She dropped it as she fell and it had gone out. Was it smashed? 
What if she had no more light? She was desperate to see what was happening. At last, she found the torch and frantically switched it on. The light shone out and Anushka swung it round, trying to see what had made the new sound. She was expecting to see another bear, maybe even one rearing up and showing its teeth. But instead, the tiger came padding towards her. The little cub was even closer this time, close enough for Anushka to see the soft pink of her nose in the torchlight and the rich ruff of fur standing out around her face. Th there's a bear, Anushka stammered. She wasn't quite sure if she was warning the tiger or asking for help. The bear had looked so huge. Was the cub big enough to scare it off? She wasn't much taller than Artur, the dog her grandfather had. But then Artur was a semi -ed and he looked like a white bear himself. Anushka wheeled round, waving her torch wildly as she tried to find the bear again. Was it coming closer? Would it attack? The bear was still standing under the birch tree, but as Anushka watched, it slapped the ground angrily with one huge front paw and lunged forward a little way, clacking its teeth with a terrifying clatter. Beside Anushka, the tiger cub snarled, gaping her jaws and twisting her ears back, her tail lashing. It was a standoff, Anushka realised, as the two creatures stamped and snarled. Neither of them really wanted to fight, but they couldn't back down. She watched, her heart thumping, as the tiger prowled forward, a low growl rattling the air around her. She was so brave, but so little. Anushka could see how much bigger the bear was than the cub. Were bears scared of tigers? She just didn't know. The bear began to back away, shaking its huge head uncertainly. And then all at once it turned tail and lumbered off, leaving Anushka and the tiger staring after it. You did it! Anushka whispered delightedly. You won! Then she pressed her hand across her mouth to hold back a laugh. As the bear bounded away, its big bottom was bouncing up and down. She turned to look down at the tiger again. Are you all right? she started to say. But then she realised the tiger had gone. Thank you for listening to that chapter and I will be back soon with chapter five. Bye everybody!